Right, welcome to my shed and welcome to this build, which again is another 1970s Tamiya tank kit. I've done a few of these on my channel and I really, really enjoy putting these together. Yes, they're very simple. Yes, they're not accurate. And uh, yes, they are an old kit, but uh, it's testament to Tamiya's um, two tooling that uh, they stand up very well nowadays, quality wise and um, like i say i really really enjoy doing these especially when it comes to uh, weathering i do like weathering the tanks it's not something i like doing with my planes um, it's just something i like doing with the tanks so um, yeah let's um let's take a look inside shall we so we've got uh, first let's just reiterate what i got here uh, british army chieftain mark V. I have done some research on these regarding reviews and uh, I've noticed there's been a couple of comments on certain videos where they reckon that this isn't a Mark V, it's a Mark II. But uh, like I say, this this is an old kit and it's not that accurate. Now whether it's a Mark II or a Mark V, I don't know. But uh, to me, it doesn't matter. All I want is a kit to go together really nice and uh, get some enjoyment out of it. Right, so let's, let's get the lid off. Right, so we've got the uh, lower hull here, and again we've got the, uh, as I said previous, you could um, motorise this because the uh, there's um, a designation of the uh, battery uh, polarity there. Um, I've never seen these motors that you're supposed to fit to these. If anybody has, I'd be interested to know what they are and what they look like. Um, they're probably most of them are long gone obviously you can't buy them now but uh yeah i mean um, it's a nice molding it's nice and sharp yes the details molded in on it um but um it is what it is right so we've got the uh upper hull here again there's an awful lot of detail again all molded in which is nice because uh, it saves a lot of time as well uh, I'm I'm a little bit impatient when it comes to kits. I like to get on. Well, I'm like it with everything. If I start something, I need to finish it. And uh, if I have troubles with it, it ends up in the bin. And I've had a few of those lately, which is why uh, I haven't put a great deal of plastic kits up on my channel. They've been sort of failures. But anyway, yeah, that's the uh, upper hole. Got the turret here and the turret base again it's all nicely molded um, I, I can't see any flash on these and to be honest I've very very rarely come across any flash on any of their 70s um, tank kits they're really really good right so we've got uh, one two three four sprues we've got two on each bag um, I'm not a great lover of everything being thrown in one bag and a uh, uh, nice nod to Tamiya uh, regarding the fact that uh, some of these sprues have got their own bag um, yeah this is the problem people get with these um, Tamiya tank kits is the actual barrel they can uh, be bent warped and they can be a right nightmare to sort of uh, uh, assemble in a, in a straight manner also the seam mark down there can sometimes be a, a little bit of a problem but um, that there looking at that that uh, barrel looks quite nice a lot of the time it's down to the fact the way they're packaged they probably be, add some weight down on top of them and in the box and that's probably the reason why I shouldn't think that the uh, Tamiya would um, put them in a the box when they're bent like that i think the quality controls are a bit better than that um yeah i mean i i i can see some flash on the figures here um but that's that's no problem but there's you know areas like this this is where old tooling where you would probably get flash and uh, there's none of it really good i believe this tank's got a side side skirts on it so um, possibility that when I do the build they'll probably go on last because I need access to uh, paint the wheel areas and axles but um, yeah yeah there's a little bit of flash there but uh, you know the small parts um, 
I don't mind a bit of flash, but if they're on small parts and uh, you're, you're trying to remove the flash and you end up breaking them, uh, it can be a bit disheartening. So um, it's just the fact that there's a risk of uh, the parts breaking when, when you're trying to clean them up. But yeah, nice, nicely molded. Right, we've got the two screws in here. I think this is basically the wheels. We'll come to that in a minute. Yeah, the wheels. Uh, these are uh, held on with um, poly caps, these here, because it was a working model. Um, the actual uh, wheels actually revolve. And that's the poly caps for it. But yeah, really nice. Yeah, can't fault that. Lovely. I mean, look at that there, that um, towing um, chain. No flash on it. What? That's no flash on it whatsoever. Yeah. Right, I've just discussed the poly caps. Uh, this is the sort of thing that uh, a lot of modelers nowadays frown upon. Obviously, the games moved forward since the 1970s and. Um, these aren't great tracks, but uh, they are what they are. I, I don't have a problem with them. Um, sometimes I have a problem uh, actually gluing them. You're supposed to uh, melt the pins over with a with a heated screwdriver, but I find it uh, it don't work. So I end up gluing these. But uh, yeah, they can be a bit of a stretch. I sometimes put them in some uh, sort of fairly warm water to soften them up before I um, actually uh, place them around the actual wheels but uh, yeah this is uh, what the uh, scale model is frowned upon on these kits but I'd rather have that than uh, have to individually assemble each link that would be a nightmare wouldn't it yeah not a great deal of decals with a tank kit there never are but um, there's a bit there. Normally find them all right, but a lukewarm water with some um, washing up liquid, and I don't have any trouble with Tamir de decals at all. Right, this is all about heating sprue. But they might be suggesting to heat a heat a sprue to generate an aerial, maybe I don't know sometimes you can melt part of the um, actual sprue frame and stretch it to generate a thin piece of plastic to uh, represent an aerial that might be it I don't know instructions uh, yeah we haven't got any um, Japanese instructions in this there's normally like two oh yeah yes, I'm talking Rubbish here, look, there's uh, Japanese instructions, English, I mean look at the write up on that, that's really small print that, it's nice that you can read up on your subject matter, but uh, usual Tamiya fare with the uh, fold out instructions, I don't have a problem with these at all, they're really really good. Yeah. Having built a few tanks, I know what sort of procedure to follow because sometimes I, I might skip a, an actual uh, sub assembly because of the painting situation or whatever. But uh, generally, I tend to follow the instructions on these to the book. Tech tips for beginners. And I've got these two here are floating around. Now I don't know whether they are part of a sprue or whether they are actual um, bits of detail that have come off a sprue. But uh, I'm going to have to keep my eye on those. Right, so there you go. I'm uh, Looking forward to this because I've had some real stinkers in the way of plastic kit builds. I've been meaning to get some kit builds up on my channel for quite some time. But I've made the mistake of buying cheap kits and uh, I've really struggled with them. 
a couple of them have ended up in the bin to be honest because I really can't be bothered with them when they're that bad personally I don't think they should be on the shelves in the model shops to be honest they shouldn't be on sale to the general public when they're that bad anyway there you go this is a Tamiya kit I ain't gonna have any trouble with this there we go right I don't know what sort of format I'll be using regarding the build but uh, no doubt it will become apparent whatever format I tend to use Right, okay, see you in a minute. Right, so I'll be talking in the past tense here because what I've done, I've actually gone ahead and made these um, sub-assemblies off camera. Uh, what I plan to do is just go through with you very quickly the instructions and just point out some uh, points that might be of interest here. Uh, first of all, it was a case of making these wheels up and they were pretty straightforward. They were in two pieces. Uh, there were two, 12 sets of these, two sets of these and a pair of these. And these um, sprocket wheels actually had the poly caps in them. Uh, these were just glued together. That was pretty straightforward and then we came to the axle side of it um, these sub assemblies here what i tended to do here is uh, insert the poly caps in the back of them and actually glue them to the lower hole before i uh, decided to add these rollers now these rollers are supposed to be a push fit but i found that uh, i either pushed them in too far which distorted them or i couldn't uh, or I was uh, not pushing them in far enough and they were sort of flopping around so what I've decided to do I've uh, I pushed them in so far and then I've glued them um, it doesn't really matter about these being um, allowed to revolve because obviously it's not going to be a working model it was just they were just looking a, a bit sloppy that's all or else they were crunched up and all distorted so I've actually glued those the wheels I've left off, um, no point putting those on because um, there's a painting um, side of it to do and I don't want to keep pushing these wheels on and off, there's, uh, there's no need for that. And then we come to the, uh, the where the axles get uh, glued to the um, actual lower hull here. These are numbered because um, the actual uh, axle assemblies, there, there are two different sets uh, one one pair is slightly larger than the other two sets so you're going to make sure that they go in the right place but Tammy have uh, numbered the um, the places where they're supposed to sit and they've numbered the actual axle um, sub assemblies as well so you can't really go wrong so they were all glued on there a little bit of detail and uh, now we come to these um, sort of um, large boxes that needed to uh, be assembled they were straightforward, never had trouble with them. Um, throughout this build, I've used the my Tamiya Extra Thin, and I've also used uh, Revel Contact there. I have used a little bit of uh, super glue, which is something that I've used on the turret more than anywhere. Uh, where are we? Four or five. <clears throat> Yeah, some more detail here. Uh, the rear bulkhead needed this. This is sub sub assemblies all uh, put together. This here, you're supposed to have uh, melted the end of the pin over so that it uh, would uh, hinge. But um, I've actually glued that. I didn't see the point of that. It's showing you there. Look, to uh, so you can get away with a with a warming up the end of a flat bladed screwdriver to do that. Um. Next we come to where the bulkhead gets glued to the lower hole. There was a bit of a fit issue there. I didn't think it fitted that well. Um, but I've managed to um, sort of um, um, fill the necessary areas up with a little bit of super glue just to fill the gaps. I don't know why it uh, just didn't fit properly. But um, it's located in the right place which is the main thing. Again they're showing here to put the sprockets on but I'm not bothering with that. So uh, that's the lower hole, so I'm going to introduce the wheels, let's just show you the wheels. Like I say, these were pretty straightforward. Um, I don't spend a lot of time on these, there's a seam mark running around the uh, perimeter of them. 
a lot of modelers will probably take time to sand that off i can't be bothered um, the kit is exactly uh, what it is it's just a cheap old kit so um i'm not going to bother too much about that um yeah so they they were glued and this is a lower hull we got the uh, axle supports here and these are the rollers that i've glued instead of just pushing them in and uh, that's the rear bulkhead that i had trouble with but um that should be okay i'm not too bothered about um super glue build up because i find that uh when I go to weather the uh, these tanks, I find that uh, if there's a bit of excess glue, it will pick up the weathering, and uh, the weathering will hide the actual uh, excess glue. I also use an accelerator on the super glue as well. It gives it a like like a white powdery finish to it, which ain't great. But it, then again, the powders will pick up on that, and uh, it'll be all right. So. Um, these are an ideal um, little kit for people that uh, haven't got a great deal of experience and uh, if you use too much glue you can get around it by um, you know the uh, the weathering process um, yeah so that was pretty much uh, what I've done there I in the past I have actually blanked these off on previous builds but I haven't got any plastic card I need to buy some I think I just happened to have a bit of flat plastic left on the uh, with the other builds and I was able to sort of fill these cavities in but I've left them. This is where the switch goes I assume. I don't know what this is for. It's obviously for something to do with the motor. So that's the lower hole done and the wheels. So here's the upper hole. This is pretty straightforward. There's only a few things to glue on here. Now, for some reason or other, all the tank builds I've done, when it comes to the headlights, I seem to have problems, and I've had problems with this one as well. There's a frame that got, got to go around these front headlights, and every time I go to uh, cut, a, cut a frame off the sprue or go to glue it on the tank, it ends up broken, and the same thing's happened here. I don't know why I seem to have trouble with, these, uh, with the frames that go around these headlights. I really don't know but um it's a shame because um up to then it was uh it was pretty much perfect the way stuff went together and yeah a little bit of uh well these here are the sub assemblies that i made earlier that needed to go on to uh the um upper hole not a lot of detail needed there pretty much straightforward so that's seven uh, we've got eight here. This is basically the underneath of the upper hole. Um, yeah, this is the up, the underneath of the upper hole. These are where the uh, these brackets are glued uh, for supporting the figures. Now I've made a mistake here because um, I've actually glued that hatch and I should have left it open because there should be three figures in here. There should be a two in the turret. And the driver should be um, made apparent on the front here, but uh, I, I overlooked that, and unfortunately, um, I've got no driver. <laughs> but other than that, these are just fixings. These are like push fi push on fixings that uh, we use because uh, obviously you needed access to replace the batteries. So uh, this this originally wasn't supposed to be glued. But um, I normally uh, glue these once uh, once I'm happy that they've been, um, you know, painted and uh, I'm ready to assemble them. Uh, the turret. Now the turret wasn't too bad. Um, there was a particular way in which it had to sit in this um, this area here, and uh, it was there was a bit of play there to be honest. But I managed to glue it together, and uh, I put numerous crocodile clips down its length to keep it straight. And to keep the seam, um, uh, keep the seam as um, little, little raised as possible. That's what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> yeah, because when you close these up and clamp them up, uh, they can move, and you create a, a quite a big seam, uh, a raised seam there, and then, and obviously it would happen underneath as well. So I made a point of making sure that when they've clamped, they're actually clamped nice and even they haven't moved because there is a lot of play in these things but um i've managed to do that um glued the end on okay this was all right unfortunately i've overlooked this part here which is a like a, a, a gun sight i assume 
I left that out, I, f I forgot all about it. So that was another mistake I made. Um, but it's only a little small part, it's not worried about. Um, yeah, so uh, let's get the upper hole here. Yeah? Uh, this is the mess I've made of the bloody headlamps. Uh, that f those frames going around there. I don't know what it is with me. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I've actually added a part to this uh, upper hole that shouldn't be there and I'm waiting going to wait for the uh, rivet counters to uh, point it out when I uh, upload the video because um, they're out there and uh, it's a part that uh, is always spare um, with these Tamiya tanks but I always end up gluing it to the uh, tank itself just to uh, piss off the uh, rivet counters out there so I shall wait in trepidation for them to say you know that shouldn't be there. What's that doing on there? <laughs> right, so that's the upper hole. Uh, getting back to the turret here. We talked about the barrel. This is a turret. This went together really nice. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, that's 11. So we want... Uh, it's 12 on here. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, yeah, this is the cup holder for the uh, turret and a uh, bit of um, detail here. This this went together okay, didn't have any issues with it. Especially with these hinges, they can be a bit of a pain sometimes. Um, I've actually glued those. Um, yeah, no trouble whatsoever with that. And uh, here we are sort of adding the extra bits to the uh, actual um, turret here. We've got the cupola going on which is I've obviously left open because of the figure and all these bits of um, uh, detail here went together really nice I had, I had concerns about this here but this went together lovely I actually made it off the tank and I mated it up and it just fitted perfect lovely and very very little flash on it as well uh, some more, this is the other side where I've had to add uh, some more detail and bits and pieces. Um, all in all, it just went together really well. And again, I've, I've probably most of that's been glued with super glue because uh, I needed it to um, glue instant. Um, just to save a bit of time and also some of these um, bits of detail weren't self-supporting. So I needed to glue them quick. Um, but... Um, it just turned out all right. I've actually used my accelerator again. If you can see all the white bits around here, this is where I've applied the accelerator. But like I say, I'm not too bothered about it. I'm not too bothered about the excess glue um, in various places because um, the weathering will pick that up. Uh, yeah, it, uh, it went together really well. I've just got that sight missing, that's all that I left, forgot to put on earlier on there. So, um, yeah, no trouble. I've done a bit of sand in here, but really, there was no need for it, really. Uh, the gun I left right to the end, um, I, that was something else I had trouble with. Unfortunately, the gun's pointing down a little bit, but um, it is what it is. And I had trouble gluing that, as you can see, it's a bit of a mess there. So yeah, I, like I say, uh, the nice thing about these tanks is I'm not too bothered about the uh, excess glue. I mean, if I was building a plane, I'd be a bit annoyed with that, but um, I'm not bothered. Not bothered at all. So uh, that's the turret. So where do we go on to from it? Ah, yes. Yes, the final bit. We've got the skirts here, look. I've got to decide as uh, as to when to glue these on. Um, I'm hoping that um, these will slot on, but uh, I've got a feeling I might have to glue them. But uh, I'm going to have to finish the tank before I do anything with that. And these two are going to be the last things that I will glue to the tank and finish it. Um, they are going to make some antennas up by melting some sprue and stretching it, which uh, I might decide to do. I don't know yet. Um, what else is there on here? I think that's it, really. The tracks, obviously, I've left off because they'll, they'll go on probably just before the skirts will go on. And I do believe that's it.
so here's the skirts these these were the only thing that needed to be glued um, I assume they, they look like it slots over by the looks of it yeah slots over something I shall find out what uh, when I go to uh, dry fit it so that's that and the figures here unfortunately like I said I could do should have had three but I've uh, that there has been closed off and uh, that's the um, commander and the radio guy I suppose so yeah so this slot is ready to be uh, primed now I use some um, ultimate primer this grey primer and I put it through me harder and steam back airbrush here which yeah, I'm about to put in my ultrasonic cleaner because it could do with a clean actually um, this has got PTFE seals in it rather than o-rings but um, I, I do find I have to clean this um, quite regularly because I don't buy dedicated um, airbrush cleaners I make my own concoction up and it does work but after a while there comes a point when uh, you need to, to strip it down and give it a good thorough clean and that's where my ultrasonic cleaner comes in handy so I'm going to clean that and uh, I shall probably show you some uh, clips of uh, the primer being applied I won't spend a lot of time with the clips they'll just be short brief ones just to show you uh, a bit of spraying and I'll be back uh, regarding the uh, top coat so um, I shall see you then Right, so I've progressed quite a lot since the last clip. I was coming back to have a discussion about the top coat, but as you can see, I've actually assembled the three parts and uh, I've sprayed it with this green, which is actually a German green because uh, the general consensus is that the Tamiya green they suggest is too dark. Now I've gone down the route of uh, doing the German version, so there's no matte black uh, camouflage on this and uh, it went together really well the um, the upper hull here uh, located in a slot here and, and you had to just drop it down and mate up the uh, uprights that were inside the uh, lower hull and just squeeze them together 
Now fortunately enough, uh, I didn't get any what I call bounce with it. In other words, uh, when you squeeze something together, it can r rise up a little bit. But uh, as I squeezed it down tight, it actually didn't move. So there's no, no gap whatsoever, although you can't see it with these skirts. There's no gap whatsoever there now. And I haven't had to uh, bother gluing it. And the same with the turret. No problem with that whatsoever. Um, I've done some detailing as you can see and I've done the figures and uh, the decals I have cheated a little bit I have added other decals that uh, weren't on the German version but uh, uh, that's my prerogative it uh, I do find that um, there's not a great deal of decals on a tank and uh, you can actually get away with adding a, a few extra without it looking a bit stupid so um, yeah uh, I haven't uh, adhered to the actual German version of it, but uh, I have used up a lot of the other decals. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the tracks weren't a problem. I've uh, sprayed those as you uh, previous seen in the uh, previous clips. Um, I glued these together, and to be honest, um, I didn't have any trouble with them. I know you're supposed to melt those pins over with a, um, a heated flat-bladed screwdriver, but um, I glued these and I didn't have any trouble. Um, they managed to sort of stretch themselves over the uh, front and rear, the, the sprocket and the dry wheel here. Um, there wasn't much of uh, a strain on that. And uh, all in all, it's now ready to um, basically have the uh, weathering done on it in the way of powders. Now what... Uh, what I should probably do is just show you a little bit of the uh, powders being uh, applied. Um, I think I'm going to probably use maybe two, maybe three different shades. And uh, what I tend to do first though is to give it a wash. I've got a light brown wash. Now, when, whenever you um, put a wash on a on a plastic kit, you tend to have to use the opposite uh, to, um, paint uh, makeup to what you've actually sprayed it so in other words this has been sprayed with acrylic so I should be using an oil wash but I don't get on with oil washes so uh, I should be applying an acrylic uh, wash to this and then I'll be uh, applying the actual uh, powders uh, the powders that I'm using are um, powders that I've made up myself there's a video on my channel regarding powders I use artist I use artist pastels I use artist pastels and I break them up and I create powders for them and um, this this lot here is about uh, 18 quid it's cost me for these powders and I still actually have some other um, pastels left actually uh, I probably won't ever use most of those uh, powders but the browns uh, greys um, the orangey sometimes like the earth what they call the earth colors I shall probably use so that's what I use in the way of um, powders if there's uh, a cheaper alternative than uh, buying a, a dedicated modeling product then I'll, I'll give it a go and I find it works all right I'm happy with those powders uh, probably the ones you buy will probably go on a bit better but uh, at the end of the day all I'm doing is just weathering this to uh, veer it away from looking like a toy to uh, an actual model right I'm waffling on so uh, I'm going to crack on and get this weathered so uh, uh, you'll see a few clips of uh, what I've just been discussing and then I'll be back uh, with it all finished and uh, I'm going to put it on a diorama. I've got a few dioramas I made up. Um, I haven't made one specifically, specifically for this. But I find that uh, presenting them on camera at the end, they look better on a diorama than just on a turntable when they've been weathered. So um, I'll see you then.
right so there she is all finished and what a lovely little build that was i thoroughly enjoyed that typical tamiya everything fitted as it should have done no issues regarding the actual assembly whatsoever the uh, the paint laid on okay and the weathering's uh, turned out okay i have added a little bit of weathering and uh, what i've used there i've used the dry brushing method using a bit of aluminium to sort of go over the tank to highlight uh, the uh, the detail here just to bring it out and uh, that's something i never showed on the um footage unfortunately but uh, i noticed that once i'd weathered it it was looking a bit bland i thought something needs to uh, make this pop and uh, all you do is dip a brush into some silver paint rub it on a bit of absorbent tissue paper keep rubbing it until there's no more paint coming out the brush and then just flick it over the detail and it just picks up and uh, brings it to life now the diorama this is something i've built many many uh, years ago i think i built this for me churchill tank um, i've decided to uh, add a few little things i had some um, fuel cans here and some jerry cans which i've added to the to the actual uh, diorama um, and the figures here are actually uh, depicting second world war uh, and obviously this wasn't around then but um, you know uh, i'm not a rivet counter it uh, it does uh, make the um, make the weathering stand out when you put it on a diorama it's better than just sticking it on a turntable uh, so there you go lovely little uh, kit that and uh, if you fancy taking up this hobby and you're not into tanks I mean I was never into tanks but I really do like building tanks um, it's a very 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 simple thing to put together and it's well worth uh, buying one of these cheap 70s Tamiya tanks they're not expensive uh, you don't need to go to the extent of buying an airbrush and uh, the weathering powders just buy one to put it together and get an idea of uh, what Tamiya kits are like and they're obviously a lot better than this now because time uh, things have moved on so uh, there we go it's all done and dusted literally so um thanks for watching uh, if you've watched this all the way through well done <laughs> um i've got a bit of a long narrative in this um i was hoping to try and make it a little bit shorter but there was no way i could do that so uh, there's a bit of a long talk regarding the um actual um assembly of it but uh, if you're interested in that you would have probably stuck with it and listen to me um waffling on but um yeah um thanks for watching and um i shall probably uh have another tank build in the near future which i intend to uh, put up on my video uh channel so uh, or youtube channel so uh, there you go i shall uh, hopefully see you again if you want to come back and see more uh, builds like this and uh Take care out there and hope to see you soon. Bye.